and we're on. Hi. Hey guys, what's up? Hi, this is Q Twyla and Tecolote from Tula, Mexico. Yay. Thank you guys so much now for we will, Yeah, we will be talking about sex dreaming. Um, Q here, Quetzalcoatl, will uh, give us an introduction, please. So many, many years ago, my benefactor in Mexico, Cachuro, gave me a koan to solve. Said there's an ancient practice here known by the Toltecs, but never revealed to the contemporary world. And I want you to solve this koan about the conjunction, the conjunction. I said to him, you mean sexual intercourse between people? And he laughed and he said, no, 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 it's something else. So we went on a search, Twyla and I, for many, many years until we were able to come back to my benefactor in Mexico and say, is this the solving of the riddle of the conjunction? And that was the answer, sex dreaming. Sex dreaming, radically different from other practices, including Tantra, and even polyamory in the fact that it is meant to open up worlds as much as those other practices are for personal enlightenment in most cases and the end result is usually vaginal penetration sex dreaming as practiced by the ancient and modern toltecs does not involve vaginal penetration all other forms of sexual play are enacted but the point is that the female's womb is looked at as a sensing device, not only a conceptual uh, place of conception, so that it's a passage in to worlds where beings come through. Therefore, once it is tampered with, with penetration, the female is not able to intuit as well. And therefore, when we go into a dark room, which is a major reenactment of the dark caves of the Toltecs, you are eliminating looking at things and your interaction with people, particularly if you get eight intended people. You're on a disc together, opening up a horizon to enter into the, the worlds that are the closest to our own earth band, the sand world, the water world, and the air world. Once you fly out further, you're getting away from the influence of the elements of our known earth, and you're into wilder territory. Everyone stays on the disc. The energy of the disc, the author of the Sex Dream book, who passed away, Anthony Forrest Vega, coined the term used by Wilhelm Reich in the 30s of orgone, which is the blue energy you see generated in that completely dark space. We generate that energy through sexual interaction with all of the other members on the disc. That fuels the disc in order to be connected and to fly through the wall into these other worlds. Now, I'm gonna bring another aspect of sex dreaming that relates to the world of everyday life. Um, the definition of sex dreaming is the art of intimately relating to one another through the not doing of sex for the purpose of energy generation. Now, again, you can use energy to travel to other worlds, but also you can use energy in your life to see deeper, to see beyond looking at objects as we are used to. So energy is extremely important. Energy equals seeing. So the idea is to be able, we, we are in this book, there is a map provided for people to be able to have a life partner where they do family and they do commitment, which is really important. They do penetration. Penetration, the usual, way that we know about doings of family relationship and to honor 
sense of commitment, which we really need to bring back to our world and to our civilization, as well as go into the mystery with other cohorts and do sex dreaming without penetration, but to raise energy and to keep the mystery. So that's the whole idea of balancing the day-to-day -day and the mystery and not have one win over the other. We are being squelched if we just go into the routine of regular life and we're being too indulgent if we're just going into the mystery and leaving all of our commitments. So how to balance that is sex dreaming. Now, so Dr. Lote, I just, I just, I just want to make this really clear. Is so, are, are we saying that sex dreaming, this practice is used to cultivate energy? That is, um, what is the, the purpose of this energy that we're cultivating? And then also, is there any point where you enter these other worlds and you guys do practice intercourse? Or is it only ever, never intercourse? I think he could relate, and it's never, ever intercourse. Intercourse is for your committed partner only, as in polyamorous oh, okay. groups. You see, in polyamorous okay. groups, the female's womb gets confused in our explorations. However, to deny flirtation with other people has led our society into cheating, lying, hiding, there is no honesty. And since this is an awareness path, first and foremost, using the body as a vehicle, dreaming and sex through the body, is that you are becoming more and more aware that your patterns in the past were deceitful to yourself, to your life partner, to everyone else around you. We're bringing back honesty, commitment to your life partner, Having your life partner be excited for the fact that boredom may set in after a couple of years, that you're introducing new players into the sphere, but there are boundaries and there are guidelines that we have found are absolutely essential to keeping, as we call, everybody on the flying disc. Then the secondary purpose is to enter into other worlds. Now, so in other this worlds, is almost like the map and the guide that every polyamorous person wishes that they have. Because I, as a polyamorous person, find myself coming into issues with insecurities that I have to address a lot uh, in exactly. my relationship. And exactly. If you, have, if you have a set of, of let's say, uh, behavioral agreements that, uh, that everybody honors, then there is no more trust to be broken right mm -hmm. um, we trust that we are each holding the same map and so if somebody you really love is spending loving time with somebody else there is no um feeling that my whole life is going to be ruined it's right? important to see that everybody goes and particularly in this dark space they're making a commitment for infinity it's not just for this world. And once they all go together, and primarily we want to have the group always come together as one unit, once you begin to go into those other worlds, visiting them, you'll understand that your commitment is beyond life here on Earth. Now, Tecalote should, should jump in here because his experience with sex dreaming was, um, is, will be very valuable because we just opened up that realm to him. He has a number of benefactors here in Tula. They all have specialties. For, for us, Twyla and myself, it was showing him sex dreaming. Other benefactors are showing him the traditional map of the ancient Toltecs as far as what the pyramids were used for, things like that. But Tecalote, now we entered into sex dreaming. And the first thing that every sex dreamer has to do is they have to get undressed. Now that immediately is either a precipice for many or it's a moment of, of they could show off if they have a great body, but normally sex dreaming is done in the complete darkness. So all those issues of body, mind, looking 
or age, even age is are all erased. All you can see is energy. Mm, well, uh, um, I think as as a man that's walking through the knowledge of Tolteca, I have realized that the sex dreaming is like a, a puzzle of, of the map. It's a very uh, important piece because as you, as you walk this. Had you understand uh, two concepts that's the tonal and the noel. Like I, I think, like common common sex goes into the tonal part, like the the penetration and the act is happening here. But when you take that energy and you take it into the noel side, that, I think that's when the magic's happening, the, the real the infinity is happening. Because. Uh, Regular sex, like commonly, I saw, I have experienced it. Like you're, you're only for the satisfaction. You don't have an intention, but when you know that you could work with the energy you're generating with sex, that's that's like the key because you realize that you're opening that that energy and you can use it. And when you take that energy into a flying disc, you realize that you could enter really far, far away a world. But you have to also become you have to discipline yourself. Uh, I have realized that, like, like in the actual world, everybody's like with sex on their mind, and, and I think that that like sex is taking energy away from people and making them more unconscious. Like they're not using that energy how it should be used. There so, is a misconception, I think, especially in the spiritual world, um, about sex and that it is depleting. I think tantra. A lot of people misconceive the act of retaining one seed as a, um, like, I don't know. I think that that may be a turnoff for some people to Tantra. Is that something that is practiced in sex dreaming? The man well, retaining? First of all, this is a, well, this is a Western practice. So if you're on the Western landscape, we believe the earth itself is a sentient body. So sex streaming starts with the love of the earth. Or, Madre Tierra is most important. Or, or like, I, I have, have I noticed it? Like you go into the, to the wild, you go to the desert, you go anywhere where there's nature, you receive energy and you could do dreaming with that energy. You can go into a water place and receive that energy. So I think that the earth is cre creating energy. But when you're going into sex dreaming, you realize that you could create energy and you could activate that energy and take that energy to go into the dreaming into the dreaming part well we mentioned that because tantra is an eastern practice so the franchising of styles that can happen in a global society is not taking into fact that what what's the ground that you're working on what's the area that you're having sex on what were the first seers getting as far as sexuality from the western node the american landscape what were they getting from the Eastern landscape? The Eastern landscape, they got the tantric practice from the sagas. But also the, oh. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just project in here. The Eastern landscape is more about receiving. It's a more feminine landscape or node of the earth. And the Western is more male creative. You can see the difference in, let's say the 1960s, the difference is really showing up when the Eastern gurus are just sitting in, uh, clouds of smoke and meditating being the receptive and arriving at nirvana while nirvana in the west is poetry music um, fashion etc etc at its height so you're seeing the two nodes that are necessary to balance the earth the feminine and the masculine and now they're all getting confused everybody thinks that they have to look to the east and the east have to look to the west and nobody's holding their own so in sex dreaming the uh idea of raising energy we immediately go into the creative which is how can we perceive new worlds with that energy and you how can we perceive energy in general just seeing energy as it flows is a concept uh, brought to us by carlos castaneda and Don Juan is a major um, concept that we need to embrace for the coming th new time, seeing energy beyond looking at objects. But let's get to a practical thing, because I, I, I think that Tecolote can relate step by step 
So here we are in the room. We're going, okay, we're going to the sex streaming, get naked, pick it up from there. Well, uh, I, I was told that we were going to do, there, were, there was a possibility of doing sex streaming, but I, I, I read and I heard this audio and I was trying to like uh, gather some information to know what I was going to face. But it just got to the point where, where Q says, uh, well, are you up to a ritual? And I'm like, yeah. So he's just like, well, we have to take our clothes. And I, I really, I, I didn't have the doubt. Like, uh, I think I think something really important when you're going out to, to sorcery is not to be afraid because that's like the first thing that will stop you. So I, I, at that moment, I wasn't afraid. I just wanted to go along and took my clothes off and energy started like, I, I think in that moment, I was following my, my voice of seeing, I was following, following my internal, my internal knowledge. It was just go along and I just closed my eyes and I started feeling energy like uh, never before. Uh, in my personal experience, I could say, say that sex energy opened the doors of perception to me of physically seeing energy, how it flows in the universe. So I think we, we, when we went into the tube, uh, that was like the most, not not impressive but it was shocking like seeing the energy and being able like to to do a jump into into the unknown i think that's what mainly the this energy is giving you is giving you the the fuel to go into the unknown and and bring back some some information we should probably point out normally we have in our other nodes for warriors a completely black round room However, here in Tula, we're in an apartment, and can everybody and, see and that? Yeah, we oh, can see yeah. that. That's great. That's intensity zones. Here, all we had was a large shower room, <laughs> so we could block out the lights here. So when we say we're entering the tube. Our tube here would have to be energized for the first time from a regular dark bathroom. So we lead Tecalote and Twilight, we all three go into that shower space, no light. What happened next? Well, uh, in that moment, uh, I, there was no light. So I, when I opened my eyes, I was able like, to, I was seeing something moving. I didn't even, I didn't know what it was until they, I was explained that that's the grid, like the, the that, like that that energy so as we started like a line we we i saw myself as being the dreamer and i knew that q was in the back and he was being the, i didn't realize that in that moment after some time before that when you go into dreaming you need a, a, a dreamer you need a stalker so i was doing the dreaming part i remember i was i touched the wall and immediately i like i blasted off into this 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 world uh i even i got a drawing maybe i'll show you uh, of the world we, we we went to but but after that like my my perception of reality my perception of life my personal importance like it vanished away and i think i think sex dreaming is the leap into awareness into 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 a tolteca world now you're probably wondering where's the sex in all of this well, what was fascinating, and Twyla will relate how she was using our bodies, and we didn't know that was happening until the next day. Twyla? Well, I was in the, between them, obviously. That's, not, that's another part after he went through his portal. I was between them, and I was moving two different ways. Half of my body is moving with a dreamer, and half of my body is moving with a stalker. So you get out of your personal space completely. And it was really an interesting uh, position to be, being in two places at once. It's a very, very good practice. But at some point, I went down and I held both their penises together like that. I touched them both together like as in a uh, unifying uh, act of intention. And I started like grabbing them like this, the both, the, the, tips of the penises really intensely and I'm like 
wow, they're not even reacting to that. I don't understand. I was like amazed. And it turns out the next day I'm asking them, what did they feel? How come they didn't feel that I was rubbing the tips of their penis penises together? And they go, we don't even know you did that. They were in a completely different world. <laughs> we, we, were, we were out exploring the landscape, you know? So she's using sex in a, in a really creative way, without fear. It's creative. That's first day, yes. right? And bringing clarity to everyone because everybody's being real. And that's one of the foundations. And we are in the unknown, you know, we're not in the known at all because immediately when you change the setting, all of a sudden there's three people and not two, you know, the usual way. You shift your assemblage point, you shift your your perception of who you are and your position and so immediately when you make a change like that you bring somebody else in even just to witness you then things change and you move into another reality so so we, still on or? we you begin yeah. to recognize as you go into these spaces that they are real practical spaces because you pick up things on the ground you see certain flying and in this case we're in the sand world which is the closest and and you begin to realize this real world has geographic locations one of the important places in the sand world which is the nearest to our own earth world are the huts you want to eventually go to the huts which were created for sex streamers from throughout the galaxy as a watering hole there's a trough in the center with blue orgone sexually generated energy that everyone can gather and feed from in these huts that were created a long long time before we have ever you know been born so twyla what happens to you at the huts when we reach them well normally um i don't know there's no normal but i i did meet inorganic beings in in the hut that are coming to uh, drink from the hut. But I, um, I, I'm almost feeling like we need to also talk about how ordinary people can gain from sex dreaming. Um, it's not only about going to world. This is the energy double, by the way. There you go, we're beautiful. Looking at. Uh, and that's, that's really what goes to visit those worlds. And imagine your energy double meeting with other energy doubles of the people that you're with in the room on the other side that's quite an achievement yeah. and then to meet also inorganic beings from other parts of the galaxy um i want you to relate having sex with inorganic beings which is a, a product of this we're still i mean that's streaming. that's really that's a high achievement that's you really um um Sometimes you think that you're fantasizing. What is an inorganic being? Can you guys clarify that real quick? Um, energy doubles. What you're seeing there, the energy double, when, when, when your energy double leaves this world because your body died already, then it becomes an inorganic being. It's basically your awareness. You're holding on to your awareness with your will through your energy double, even your body died, that's when you become an inorganic being. You no longer have an organic body, but you still so, have your awareness. What, what is this having? Oh. Yeah, we're still there. You're still there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says this meeting no longer has a time limit. Yeah, I it looks like it. I like that. <laughs> There's a lot to explain. <laughs> Could yeah. you explain? I think I think to, to show you the process of sexuality is the energy that is throughout the entire universe. All the inorganic beings come to the sand world and these other worlds based on sexual energy. That is the glue that holds all of our life forms together. Yeah, and I totally resonate with that. I mean, kundalini energy is very sexual feeling and i there's a reason that tantra can be a vehicle that takes you to states of nirvana and enlightenment 
And um, I really am interested in this shared journey through sex dreaming. And this. And, and again, what, how it differs a little bit from Tantra. Tantra, you're going for personal enlightenment. In sex dreaming, you're going for everybody enlightenment. Yes, yeah, that's but I, but I also, I always like because I'm the female, I always want to bring things back to earth. So, uh, one uh, of the bigger benefits is that you're able to hold on to your commitment and to your family and to your relationship because you still you found a way to maintain not only the routine of the relationship but the mystery. Okay, so. That's really important at our time because there's so much confusion about freedom versus indulgence versus commitment. Nobody knows what's going on. We need to be able to hold on to commitments. It is, it's, it's the glue for a civilization to maintain itself. So how do we do that and still be in the mystery? Because Commitment means a lot of, a lot of routines. And you go, how am I going to do this? This is what allows you, this map that we are providing in this book is what allows you to start the process. It is risky. It is challenging. But it is a tool. So um, when we go into sex dreaming with other people, people we actually save our relationships providing everybody understands the importance of the sacrifice that we are willing to put out for each one of us in order to do that i think i began to love twyla more when i could bring in a young man like tecalote for her energetic field as an aging female wow the best thing a young man to actually give her energy that is my gift of love to her. And that's a sacrifice. I don't consider it a sacrifice at this point. I think that's an absolute necessity if we are to live long, aware lives and be honest and true to ourselves. But you also know that we're holding the same map. And according to the map, everybody behaves according to the rules of the map. And then we're able to maintain our commitment. Well, let me go back. You showed a diagram. Yes, Here's thank you. Position, that is the position. steed position right there, generating fire. So that normally would be considered like the doggy position. However, that has proven to be the best position to enter into the sand world. You see the sand huts in the background? Yes. Yeah. So if you would imagine that you're not with your life partner, you, let's say there's four of you now and you switched partners and um, and you generate energy without penetration. You assume the position, but you're generating energy together. You're new to each other and there's a lot of energy between you and you take, and with that energy, you ride to the sand wall. Now, a lot of time there is one leader that is able to imagine better or to actually go there with their energy double and they're able to be at two places at the same time. They're able to go with the energy double and talk and describe to the people where we're going. So the people who are having a little bit more difficult time uh, getting there with their energy double, they can listen to the story and go with the story until such time that they're able to actually go there with their energy double. Once they begin to see, let's say that the wall leader is in there in the dark, he's, okay, horizon is developing. I want you to picture the horizon in front of you. At a specific time, we're gonna build up energy, all of the couples, and we're going to now leap. And at that moment, everybody pushes forward and they make a leap into the sand world. The wall may continue to describe what the sand feels like. Somebody else comes in and says, whoa, what are those glittering objects out there? We all move towards them, staying linked together. And in that sexual energy, we eventually develop that disc, which you know, helps us to fly faster to the huts and other locations. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, like I've noticed that uh, sex dreaming can be like for the common people, but I think for the sorcerers it's like a highly energy maneuver. Because I have just realized it, this right now that when you're doing sex dreaming, you're entering new worlds, but not with the physical, with the energetic body. So I think you're actually exercising your your energetic body in another reality. And that that's, that's we can say you're practicing for the day you're going to die because you'll be able to recognize your energetic body in another world and not be afraid. You, like you'll die and you'll probably realize that you've been there before or there, you'll be aware and you could mm. continue and going into infinity. I think that's, that's a really good long, point. Yeah. That's a really good point because you're actually supposed to be very aware, and this is the key, that you're in two distinctly different places at the exact same moment. It's not just lucid dreaming where you're aware of just one position. You wanna be aware that you're having intimacy with another person, totally present, and at the exact same moment, totally in another reality and another world. I have a question. Hmm. Um, so I use psychedelics for, to um, healing and PTSD and I was wondering if you guys think there's any connection between like the psychedelic space and sex dreaming and it seems like a lot of the things you guys are talking about like I've had those experiences on like high doses of mushrooms just like kind of astral projecting like being in two places at one time like going to these other worlds do you think there's any connection between those two um, sorcerers or um, people who do energetic work definitely uh, must have an ally, uh, a plant ally um, that they find on the other side. Um, now that, uh, you know, smoke, little smoke is legal, um, we can use that and definitely uh, receive information. Now, sex with inorganic beings can be definitely enhanced the possibility is enhanced by using a plant ally, absolutely. It actually is very, very, it'll take years and years and years to be able to achieve um, those kind of remarkable meetings through personal meditation, especially that the earth, as of now, has lost a lot of energy because of people multiplying in in such speed and earth is losing energy and when earth loses energy we lose energy because we are earth and when we lose energy we lose a lot of the abilities that we used to have as human beings and now it's even more difficult mm -hmm. so plant allies are really important because they basically speed up your brain little smoke is good enough you don't need to do anything major um, you can speed up your brain and when you speed up you could actually see those allies that um, That you can meet with and they can give you information now. We're using the term ally Just using a plant or a white powder to get into an altered state and be at the party No white powder, is, no white is, powder. Is, is not an ally no white powder. We're just talking about plant or organic in the old Toltec system, there were three. There was Noctora, Tempeyu, which is peyote, and the last one is the Ongo, which is the mushrooms. The little smoke is a new phenomena to many of the old sorcerers here, but we're, we're saying when you become the plant, it, it, it's an ally. If you're still human and not thinking through the plant, then it's not an ally. Once it begins to speak clearly to you and give you directions, then you have an ally in the plant. And definitely the plants are part of shamanism, part of sorcery, always will be. This is not obviously with sex and power plants. This is not the path of the monk or the nun. But you can, obviously, because we're generating energy together, there is the possibility to go places just with the sexual energy that we're generating that's really important to know but also know that one of the the biggest challenges 
uh, for sex dreaming is self-importance. That's one of the biggest challenges for humanity in general. Um, because of self-importance, we are very heavy. And when we take it with us into the tube or into working with other compatriots, it literally is a hindrance. Because if you can't leave your self-importance at the door just for one hour or 10 minutes of working together, it will stop everything. So basically what we're saying is that you need to enter naked of your clothes, but also naked of your self-importance so that you can be with each other without thinking and without, you're becoming a battery basically. You're saying I'm now a battery. Yeah, I that's think, it. I think when there's no when you go into sex dreaming and yourself is, you leave your self importance behind, like a Q was saying that maybe on a wall has to say, well, there's a sun rising. Or I think when you you go with no self importance, you no one has to say nothing to you. Like you'll go directly to the energy, you'll connect directly because you your energy is is is, is clear. So you just go and go into the energy that's flowing and you'll see the same thing so go receive the same messages and you'll be aligned i think being aligned is uh, really important that is real love that is real love we're finally we're finally seeing love as energy and that blue energy is enhanced or gets brighter when we're doing great sex dreaming we're actually seeing what love looks like in this practice. Now you have up on the uh, screen now, the intensity zones in sex dreaming. That's the interior core of the body. Uh, as opposed to some of the Eastern um, uh, practices, we don't use seven chakras. We don't use the top head ones, unless you're very advanced. For this diagram shows the decision point at the base of the neck, then what's called the furnace of the heart and lungs. We have the will point, at the umbilical region, the life passage, which are the genitals, and the death passage, which is the anus. The anus is one of the major routes that we slide on. And it's extremely important that that chakra, that intensity zone, is established as part of the sex dreaming practice. And actually, the life passage, which, which is the vagina, is reserved to life partners. So then there's no confusion. There's no confusion with kids, with family. This is all life passage. Mostly we use the death passage in sex dreaming. Um, it's, 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 the, it's the not doing of sex. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's really interesting. That's yes, it's the not that doing of it, sex. That makes me feel really comfortable actually. Like I wouldn't mind that at all. Like my boyfriend and I just had a talk actually. Um, we are polyamorous, but I told him I'm at a place where I feel like I don't want to go out and attach myself to any other male partner. And so, uh, you know, I just told him I didn't want to do that. Exactly, because, because the next day, even if you were penetrated, I mean, there is the idea that in very, very advanced sex dreaming, if you have a group of people who really trust each other and they've gone through many, many challenges, we're talking really advanced years into it, that people could have uh, anal penetration because literally, if you're penetrated anally for the female, the next day you're already eliminating. It's not like vaginal penetration, it stays with you forever, for at least seven years. So that that's uh, uh, you know we we have arrived at that conclusion through research, personal research, personal sacrifice, and um, that that was our conclusion. The death passage is is key. Well, I'm sure no. there's a lot of people interested to read more about sex dreaming. Um, so we're really excited to actually pull up the book again. I'm going to go ahead and share the Amazon link just so that you guys can see. Okay. I will say this, sex dreaming is a little bit, not a little bit, but I noticed 
through our limited experience really that it's more difficult for females than for the males and the female has to be really one who is searching for awareness and not only for a regular partner it's 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 there is always a little bit of a difficulty in with self-importance especially for the female because when a female sees that her male is loving another female it's it's very difficult there is a sacrifice there but she has to want her awareness more than anything else and that's where self-importance is being left out so that particular point is actually a challenge but also a benefit for our awareness everybody reads a particular in the toltec system there's various gates that you have to go through the first one is fear the next one is clarity which is difficult because you think you know everything get through that gate you reach the gate of power power is very difficult because you think you have all the power which you do well how do you use it and the last one is old age which we're all going to so all of the acts and sex streaming have those four gates in them gate of fear do i look good do i perform good mine gate of clarity i know everything gate of, in each moment now when i got here to I, love, I just want to say i really love and i want to call attention to the fact that sex streaming addresses the coming of age or like going into the years of the crone and like honoring mm -hmm. that space which mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. a, a lot of um you know religions even or uh spiritual practices of any sort acknowledge that passage or have right yeah when you when you go into the tomb um there's no age you you don't really see each other it's all dark in there and what you would notice is that people have ample amount of energy to give everybody but the older people have a certain intensity that the young people they shiver from that <laughs> 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 That's for sure. We were just changing into our Nawal recently and crawling towards this uh, young apprentice in our Jaguar forms. And he was so afraid. We, okay, that's enough. We'll stop. Right so actually, in the Toltec map, there is, there is an equation in the Toltec map, and everybody really does need to be aware of it um, so that don't, they don't feel used or misused or et cetera is that the equation is that uh, it goes like this, the older people and the younger people stand in front of each other and the older people basically activate the young people to get energy from them while the younger people receive knowledge and they also get activated in a way that they wouldn't unless the more knowledgeable, knowledgeable people activated them. So it's kind of like knowledge for energy. When I got here to Tula. There is that exchange. We are living in a predatorial universe. Everybody has to be aware of that. It's not a peaceful universe. It's war everywhere. And you have to find yourself within that war. And a group of people has to find itself within that war as coming together but also realizing that each one is a predator. Very, very important. We're not pretending. Mm. Uh, the predator, the predator eye is what's used throughout sexual um, flirting. You know, you're a hunter out there. The female's doing her predator eye, the guy's doing his predator eye. And once you recognize that part of yourself, then you're becoming more aware. This is something that a hunter does. Well, how good are my stalking skills? How good she is That's like unbelievable. You guys the, the supporting partner, the stalker. <laughs> and the dreamer. Stalking and dreaming, we both have in ourselves. Um, Everybody oh, has, an has a both. So what would Twyla be? If is she a stalker as well? Well, everybody um, has both, but our predilections. There is there is a, here's everybody has stalking and dreaming, but each person who is born is born naturally with a predilection. 
I'm, no. I, my predilection is dreaming, although I've been doing stalking all of my life because I had to. But how do you know your predilection? A lot of time when you go to a power spot on the land, you can see how you behave on your own. <clears throat> if you immediately want to lay down and look up at the sky, you, you took your little ally and you're going, I just want to be dreaming awake, hear the birds, and go out there to a different world. You're a dreamer. If you get to the power spot and you start walking around, you're looking, what's in that direction? What's the boundary of my place where I feel comfortable with? Wow, look at these rocks here. They're telling me something. Maybe they're ancient carving. That's a stalker. Immediately the stalker stalks the detail. The dreamer wants to go to the other world. Now, when you recognize each person's predilection, you realize that's so important because the dreamer can take everybody to the world that they went to, but they can't remember anything. So the stalkers are there starting to map out the details and they're allowing the group to stay in that world beyond a second. So we allow everybody to do their predilection and matter of fact, we enhance it. Um, when I got here to Tula, I was coming from my benefactor in Takati. He's 105 now, who had given me the Cullen about sex dreaming. And I wanted to know what the Toltec elders here thought about sex dreaming in their ancient practices. Well, Donna Tura immediately said, ah, oh, of course, sex dreaming. I go, he goes, you want to get eight people in your desk. And create a diamond, right? And create a, a diamond energy crystal that everybody's orgone is focused on in order to be the fuel for the disc. Well, I went over and slapped that man's hand, <laughs> you know, because, because this ancient practice is throughout Mexico and we're just revealing it now to help the world evolve, as you're saying, into understanding the female energies, the male energies. Well, and the Earth and Kundalini moved back in yeah, 2012. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. to Mexico, actually, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Nawal sun is coming in 2021, where the feminine intuitive, it's the dark sun, it's the intuitive, it's the feminine. That's why we're it's noticing it's like a loving, peaceful wave kind of wash over the planet since 2012. At least I've noticed the shift mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in consciousness, mm -hmm. and awareness, and talking to people and all that. So It'll be in full force in 2021. So what we're doing here is we're giving the world, you are doing it. Part of the gifts that the voice of seeing said, bring sex dreaming to the world as an evolutionary step for the new Nawal sun. This practice is a key to having a new civilization. Honesty. I know that we're all destined to be partners with each other at some point. Like that is, that's part of having a utopia. I believe that's a necessary evolutionary step that we have to make. We have to switch from, um, you know, like toxic monogamy, not saying there's anything wrong with healthy monogamy because that does exist. However, it's very rare. It's, it's, it's very, very rare. Well, it, it, it's a routine that you can't, you literally, if you only embrace the one side, remember what I said, if you there's the tonal and there's the nawal, there's the routine, the, the commitment, the family that everybody wants, and then there's the mystery and the flying into perceiving other worlds that everybody wants, and we can't let go of one for another. We have to find the balance, and we have to remember that commitment and honesty is only available when there's a map given that's not confusing okay so if you just define even just for definition the life passage for life partners and the death passage for sex dreaming there's already some kind of a way to say you're my life partner and i want to tell you everything that's going on i'm flirting with that guy over there because i'm really having great energy exchange and it's, it's making me alive. I've been with you for five years now, and this is making me more alive, but I'm not leaving you. My life passage is for you. That's it. Now, what's fascinating in a few males. That's like, that's like a way of like holding like a, 
like holding space and like honor for your life partner in a way that you don't for anyone else. It's telling them exactly. that they're special and that they matter and all, and that you're going, you put them above everyone else pretty much. And it, you know, even if it's yeah. just because we're defining it that way and it makes sense to define it that way because through the life passage, you bring kids to the world together and that's mm -hmm. reserved for each other and you never, ever, ever break that. And then you have a chance to maintain that so important balance because if you just go into the tonal, you're dead. You just it's 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 just death. It's basically your your mystery and your magic. It, it all gets swollen into the routine of having children, taking care of the children, taking care of the family, going to work, and and there's no space for the mystery. I want, I want to bring up, it's really important because you have males who have never touched another male body in sex dreaming. You know, it's, it's, if they're heterosexual, it's almost like an experience you only have a few. Like when I raised my sons for the first time, I go, whoa, these guys are really solid compared to my daughter as a baby. They're a totally different form. <laughs> Most guys don't have that experience unless they have, have sons which they can interact with. So when you're in the tube and I'm with Tecolote, I'm, the first thing I say to him, have you ever held on to another man's penis? You know, the guys might say yes or no. That's an energetic field that every guy should experience. You mm. know? And and you can I only wonder, do that. I wonder the, why so many, why it's ingrained in us through media and propaganda and religion that that is wrong and bad. And it's so terrible. I, I don't think it's put I mean, in a, I think it was put a lot these days. But <laughs> well, well religions the first thing religions want to do is control sexuality because that's the most mm -hmm. powerful force on the planet. They either say you have to wear special clothes or only our priests and rabbis can do it this way and you can only do it on this particular day. And religions mm -hmm. try to lock down sexuality right away. It's the first mm -hmm. thing they want to do. Shamans go, Whoa, if we don't deal with that, we're gonna have the guru having sex with all the women pretty soon in secret, which happens all the time. <laughs> So <laughs> you do hear about that actually. <laughs> you hear about it every time. Every time, right? <laughs> now I really want to address one other uh one other really important uh aspect of sex dreaming is for people who have no partners. Like Ivan here, he ha he has yeah, he has four partners yeah, now got, since he started sex yeah, dreaming. But, we don't even see him at night anymore. <laughs> but he doesn't have a life partner yet, right? So he's meeting women and all that. And what I'm trying to say is for people who don't have partners, sex dream, dreaming can be a tool, especially for women. Because women, once they are penetrated, they're completely, you know, I know that you, you go into the attachment realm, at least I do. Not all women are all like women. Do no, you're an aware female. Like, if you can't do it, how do you expect them so to have a chance? we're saying right? go back to the old values of dating somebody for... I don't know, it's it's probably personal how long, three months, six months, a year, two days, it's a personal thing uh, of maybe trying sex dreaming for a while before you go into the penetration to figure out, is this my life partner before I'm getting all attached to somebody that is not, so there's merit to, to all so you that can't dating. Sex dreaming as a single person. Yes, exactly. And, and, and explain it to this person that you're meeting and say, hey, I'm sex dreaming with you and I'm sex dreaming with other people. It's going to take me a little while to decide if you're my life partner or not. So the fact that I'm having sex dreaming with you, I'm not your boyfriend yet, right? So there's okay. this time of dating that you're doing with a few people to realize what's going on. I have a technical question about some of the positioning. So does the penis Great. ever... Ah, oh, that means you want to talk to a stalker. <laughs> oh, a stalker here. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd ask some of these dreaming questions. <laughs> yeah, so whenever... So say um, the dreamer is engaging with a new partner and they already have a life partner or whatever, does the dreamer allow the other dreamer say is the penis of 
the outside partner that's being brought in, is that allowed to like graze over the top of the clitoris? During oh, yeah, this is a great question because I've enjoyed these explorations tremendously <laughs> because the male is automatically programmed to procreate. We have a goal of getting in that vagina no matter what. And after we get in and ejaculate, we don't even care. <laughs> you know, so we had to look through all these awareness things. What are we doing here? Well, we have to do, we have our bumper sticker that says, do everything, indulge in nothing. So that means I'm gonna have to touch that clitoris with the head of my penis underneath, let's say in the um, steep position, because that generates energy and otherwise i'm right. lying to myself if i don't do something here i'm faking it I'm let's, faking, put, it, let's right? put it this way you can go gradually it doesn't mean i mean really i mean in order to um, get more and more and more advanced in in sex dreaming you have to build it up with people you have to build the trust with the people you're working with so hopefully everybody stays on the disc and let's say you go into the tube first with clothes on. Then, you know, you take off your top altogether. Or maybe two more advanced sex dreamers work together and two others are just feeling the other two. It, it can, there's a myriad of possibilities. I want to get back to the stocking thing. Depending on trust that you have built through time. My stocking is really... So the most important thing for me is the position we haven't talked about, which enters into the water world. Where the Which woman, there. right? The woman is sitting to on top of the male. Yeah, yeah, that would be the good. water world. So this, the female has complete control. I, as the raft, have to lay there stoically. I can't even bring my hands up to hold on to her hips. She is going to navigate and tell us where we're going or the whole group. So she's sitting on me. She can adjust my penis any way she wants. She's in control. And for me, I have to be a piece of wood. That's all I am. She's saying we're gonna go now down the waterfall. The water is spreading out from underneath us. We are entering into this landscape. I'm explaining the islands I'm seeing. And I have to not do my traditional male activity. And that for me, that water world is bliss and heaven freedom. What about yeah, those partners was, uh, that have a hard time uh, being submissive or vulnerable as a man? It's, it's awareness. There's agreements that are made. It's really great to have all these precipices. Sex dreaming brings up every single precipice. You know, oh man, why am I doing this? Who am I? Why am I not doing my regular things? Man, I love this woman so much. I think the author, Anthony Vega, is great because he does the every man thing. He goes through finally getting in the tube. We give him the love of his life, one of our apprentices. Her name's Maya. Maya. He has to go in the tube. He's kind of overweight. He has health issues. He's going to have to face, he doesn't know that she's going to be in the tube. At the end of the book, she's there with him. And he's, he's there with the fantasy that he saw outside in the tonel on the streets. What's he going to do? Now, he wants to kiss her in the book, but he also wants to sex dream. He's between the two worlds. Everything he's known about love is now on the table. He's with a woman who could give him a new world of love. I won't spoil the ending of the book, but that moment and his progression in the book shows the difficulties that we face to becoming aware. Beautiful. Well, I can't wait to read this book. I'm really excited. Awareness through sex dreaming. Now, uh, when people read the book, I just want to mention that there are a lot of uh, concepts based in the Toltec uh, map, the warrior way, and they are explained briefly. Um, if people want to get more information about the Toltec way, they should read Carlos Castaneda, especially start with Journey to Ixlan. It's a very good starting book, even though it wasn't the first book he wrote. And then they could get a little more information about those concepts we are mentioning. Also, Armando Torres' Conversations with the Nawal is a good book to read to understand 
more deeply all these concepts we are mentioning. I also wanted to ask Ivan, as a beginning sex dreamer facing the world out there without a life partner, give us some of your thoughts about that. Yeah, and also from a stalking position, what are you doing out there at night? <laughs> Very mysterious guy. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, having a life partner is like a, a very important decision on on a man of knowledge, I can say, because you're aware that you're going to be with that person, sharing energy with that person, and you, you'll probably go to infinity with that person. So, and traveling to different worlds, it seems. So you, yeah. yeah. Go to different worlds. So uh, right, I think at this point of my life, I haven't uh, got my partner yet, but because I know, I know that I have to find the right, the right energy that goes along with my energy. So I can say that practicing normal sex, it's it's not it's not the best thing because as you're saying, you're going inside the 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 female and. And she's, she gets confused and you grab some energy that she's holding and now I have to deploy myself and, and reactivate my energy. So I think that sex dreaming is like the, the, the best, how can we say, the, the answer to, to, to understanding energy. But it is hard finding someone or not finding, it's hard. Uh, Someone that that's up to doing sex dreaming, and more more I can uh, I can say in Mexico because people don't like to talk about sex. Maybe sex is something that that's like a taboo, something that's really close. So so I think bringing sex dreaming to the world is 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 the is the key, and especially for sorcerers. It's the ma it sorcerers, sounds like it's the map that everybody's kind of been looking for. And I feel it's like the maybe that's missing in the polyamorous community because hearing this, I feel enlightened. My mind is just like blown. I'm like, whoa, like this changes everything. Well, you're going to be the and carrier of the message of the revolution. You're part of the yes, revolution. you are the carrier you know, of it. I, I, I we need to, people um, of your age group yeah, to be the carriers. Who are sexually active. Because we right? can't be the carriers of that. Only you can. Well, we're not the Olympic stars of sex dreaming by any means. <laughs> we're, we're the messengers. Well, I, haven't, right? I haven't heard from Mila for a minute. Mila, are you still there? Yeah, I'm just soaking up everything, just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> so <learn. sweaty>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you sweating? Awesome. Michael, I'm I'm like, I like I like that the carriers of of the message are females because literally it's much more difficult for a female to embrace sex dreaming than for the male. I see that more often, Ivan's gonna go, oh wow, sex dreaming sounds really good to me. <laughs> and then the females that he's gonna meet are gonna say, wait a minute, I'm not gonna have only you for me only? What do you mean by that? <laughs> I'm not interested, you know what I'm saying? So it's really important that uh, females are the carriers um, of, of this uh, map. In the, in the Toltec tradition, the females are the lead. They, they are called witches. And they, the sorceresses, are the ones who lead the Toltec core. Now, Wait, there's a the difference Toltec... between there's difference the... between sorceress and witch. Okay, a sorceress. Oh, okay. Yeah, a sorceress uh, in 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 our Toltec map, a sorceress is looking at the bigger picture. She's not the end goal. A witch sometimes uses her, you know powers that she has gained in the end scene for personal gain. The sorceress uses the powers that she gained in the end scene, her connections with inorganic beings, with allies that help her. Um, she uses that for freedom, for perceiving new worlds, and for helping others perceive new worlds. It's not about personal gain. So that's the difference between a witch and a sorceress. So we want to stay within the sorceress. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel, I feel more like a sorceress. <laughs> you great, are. great. Yeah. Personally. We're not saying that, that witches are bad necessarily. We like that in the new times, women embrace the unseen and their relationship with the unseen is very important. But everybody has to remember 
that there is a bigger picture than me and my ally. Okay, the bigger picture is how many people together can work to achieve the reality of connecting with the other side. That's beautiful. Man, I just am so excited to get my hands on this book. Um, in case anybody wants to follow these beautiful people, uh, you can find them on Facebook. And I'll just go ahead and share this Facebook page that you guys have so that people can come join you and ask questions as they come up, because I'm sure a lot of you will have questions as you guys find out about this and like start to embark on this journey because I'm sure that anybody who hears this information and actually takes the time to listen to this is going to be just as excited as Mila and I are um, to take sex streaming. I don't know. Mila, are you going to try sex streaming? I, I feel yeah. like I have to try this, man. You can start with, start with each other. You start with each other. Start with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one yes. thing we would be great. One thing we didn't cover is remote sex streaming. So we will visit other people in remote locations who are sexually active as we are sexually active. It doesn't matter. Millions of miles around the globe. We will go to their environment and tell them what their room looks like, for example, so we know we're in the right location and do remote sex streaming. That's covered in the book too. This well, is first really we make a connection and then yeah. we first we can make a connection globally um, in the ethers and then once we make the connection we can also move eventually into sex streaming but, remotely yeah. now no, do you imagine think it the would world be weird yeah. or wrong to would it take away from the magic of the ceremony so to speak to actually like document the sex streaming occurring where well, was we that? say record everything. Right. Record everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Always record everything and make a creative document for yourself. And maybe then you would want to share it with well, the world. We've, we've already done That's it. where right. stalking and dreaming is really combined, combined to. But this is all done in the a, dark. Am I correct? No, we actually you made what we, call, we called shamanistic theater. We did. Uh, uh, movies that depict the positions oh, and we have dude, dim light. I have one of them actually. I wonder if I could pull What do you mean up? you have one of them? No, you don't. What? You, well, you transmitted well, you that? You are a sorceress. A a YouTube, uh, <laughs> you guys sent me a link to a YouTube um, page, but I don't know if I actually saved it in the, or not. Well, we, or we, we, did, we did, a, there, there are four or five hours uh, what we call shamanistic theater, which involves sex streaming with other warriors. And that is all on, I, I think, the most important films that have ever been made. But when we premiered it in Albuquerque, the uh, the first installment, are we on? Oh, there? what happened? Are we, oh, yeah. We're still there. Wait, we hello? There? Oh, sorry, one second. Can you guys see oh, me now? Are showing our, our sex streaming page? Okay, sex yeah. streaming page. Everybody? When so we everybody can go here on Facebook. It's just called Sex Dreaming. It's a public group you can join. And this way you guys can talk about sex dreaming and get your ans your questions answered and find out more information. So like, here's this video. I wonder if I could click on this. Do you guys want me to play this clip real quick? Oh, oh this okay. is this is not about this, this is, is about, not about sex dreaming, although, uh, you know. But I wanted, I wanted to point out that we did premiere the first chapter in a public theater in Albuquerque, regular movie well, house and Shamanist theater, theater, which covers sex streaming. And it was really fascinating at the premiere. It's very rare when a movie hits the public and people run out of the theater screaming. <laughs> no, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> so people were like outraged. They thought it was gonna be shamans in the Amazon stirring ayahuasca. <laughs> Boy, were they surprised. Now remember, I'm going to bring it back to what I said in the beginning. The Western node of planet Earth is a creative node. So therefore, for us to take sex dreaming into the action of theater and movies, it doesn't have to be like in the thick of the action. It can be maybe a little later, you turn on the light, 
it's really hard to capture magic, real magic. So, on film. So Good you luck. stage it afterwards, maybe a little bit to, to recapitulate. That is a practice, is a very ancient practice called recapitulation. You recapitulate your experience together and doing it through the arts is one of the most exhilarating. You, you're, you're God, you're creating, right? Most people do the big I'm glad thing. that it takes away the shame surrounding what I do because, you know, I sell pictures and videos of my mm -hmm. sexuality. Mm -hmm. But I. Well, that's sex streaming. Imagine it. I purposefully do it in a way where I'm showing people through this act the intention of loving myself or loving this other partner. Like, I don't mm -hmm. do it in the you know, the old style pornography type sense. Like it's not all about the money. Like I actually take time to get to know my partners and trust and love these people and like really connect with them on a deep level before I do share those experiences. As long as you're teaching them to see energy and not you as an ego person is, okay. is when you ascend anything that's been given in the world. Cool. Now we want you to we want you to preserve your awareness because we've had a lot of members in our core that um, were prostitutes by profession or strippers or other uh, sexually related you know sex workers and the key well explain what what happened I, well I I have a theory that when you sell your body you actually uh, 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 introduce a crack into your luminosity because your body has a luminosity so there's something about a breach that 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 you create unless you're extremely aware person and you know exactly what you're doing so you're not selling your body because you are desperate or because you are um I don't know what else to say, but it's a very, very fine balance. You have to be extremely aware of what you're doing. Um, I frankly, personally would not accept money for that exchange because sex dreaming is related in the idea that you're getting together with people to generate energy for the purpose of deepening your seeing. Okay, so if you are actually teaching sex dreaming, I, I could see how you can accept money for that. Mm -hmm. But if you're just giving your body for money, then you have to be very, very careful not to crack your luminosity. You have to I'm consider just trying yourself. To figure out if it would be wrong to like practice sex dreaming and continue doing what I'm doing, which is Mila and I were remodeling a bus and a camper and we're going to take it on the road and we plan to make content together, but we're also going to be making a lot of content here for our YouTube channel. That other stuff, like it's all fun and whatever, but it's, it's strictly like mainly just to help support this other really important work that we're doing. Absolutely. Read the Wait, book. Read, read the book. Read the book. You are a messenger on your bus. Yes, absolutely. To help awareness. Consider yourself as the messenger a, of sex a, a saintly, energetic uh, female who's going to open the door to a new way to use sex. You're going to be the evolution revolution. Keep that foremost in your mind, and that will help you okay. make all your decisions. Okay, as long as I can like serve with that intention, then that makes sense to me. Hey, you're talking to people who love sex. We're saying, wow, let's change it a little bit, right? A little I, and bit. that's why I actually I wanted to bring you guys on here is because I do want to raise awareness around this issue. I feel like so many of us these days don't take sexuality. We take it for granted. We don't give it the proper honor and respect that it mm -hmm. deserves. A lot of us. Now, I um, as an elder, honor and I as an elder, <laughs> I'm at the point where I'm saying, wait a minute what is the most and you're utilizing this what is the most important body part and it's the least organic on the human body that collects energy 
It's the eyes. Oh. The males on the other end of the internet, when they're looking at a beautiful woman, they're collecting energy through their eyes. The energy double, when it's fully formed, has no arms or legs. It doesn't even have genitals. All the information comes through the eyes as it goes through the universe as a world builder, collecting through the eyes. Sensuality, orgasm, it's all through the eyes. So, but is to it some through degree, the third eye? Or is it through like your actual optical? Hey, I, I'm a stalker. Forget about that dreaming stuff. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> when I see a beautiful okay, woman, okay. I have to ask it myself. Depends on your, it depends on if you're dreaming or stalking. Okay. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I love the female shape. I paint them. I look at them. I love all women, all ages, forever. And I'm collecting in my eyes all the time. And that's what the is men are doing on the other end. So teach them what's really going on a little bit, but those guys are love, their eyes are like on fire. Yeah. It's amazing. Now also, it's amazing. remember, what is sex well, then, dreaming? Yeah, we should teach sex dreaming in our videos then as like. Yeah. But also, also, uh, um, what is the map of sex dreaming saying? That your life passage is reserved to your partner. So as you're doing your videos and whatever you're doing, keep to the map of sex dreaming. Your yeah, life passage absolutely. is taboo. It's only for your life partner and everything else is available. I'm gonna reveal now a real secret here because you got me inspired looking at you. I haven't seen your great beauty in a long time. That the shaman started in the mid nineties to put sex dreaming into the whole pornography field. What they were doing, they were taking the vaginal penetration out of the equation. So the number one use of pornography today is the death passage. We intended that a long time ago. That is, that is, yeah, a lot of people like and enjoy anal sex. That and was our intention. Okay. <laughs> that was our intention because it comes to the brain field. I have able to enjoy it. I've well, tried you know it what? a handful of times, and um, I like like my butt plug here or there, or like a finger or two. But I'm not like really about being penetrated with a penis in my anus. Well, I mean, over videos, you got a lot of lube and like warming up beforehand and all that stuff. Like it's just, I don't know. But over <laughs> videos, you you are taking a bus of video. For video right you don't have to be uh, yeah. penetrated by video you can just be creative and well i you show you believe i may have met my life partner like we've really talked about, i haven't like specifically had the conversation like are we life partners but we have like had some pretty intense conversations about how much we love each other and how we don't want to live our lives without each other and how we want to do whatever we can to honor and respect each other and well, you have a way to do that though. yeah yeah so i'm actually really I'm saying you can um, you can be in your videos you can be very creative in how you present your death passage you don't have to be penetrated you Mila, do you like anal sex I've never been able to get into it. Like I, I, like what you were saying, like I like a finger every now and then, but I've never been able to like fully get into it. Well, from a stalking position, I'm gonna reveal another one of my secrets. Every single woman I've been with always says to me, what, I've never done anal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know to believe them or not anymore. <laughs> 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 but seriously, no, no, find I think ways. I successfully did it once, but I didn't enjoy it. And like the other handful of times that I tried it, like we couldn't even get it all the way in. It was just too much. Well, it is it, <laughs> it is an acquired taste. <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. You're gonna do. <laughs> We're not but, saying anal penetration. Twilight, just show your anus on the screen. The guys will be happy. Easy to there orgasm me. as a woman through the anal passage. Without having, sorry, like, like women, we don't have prostates. Um, so, but are we still able to orgasm through of the anal course. passage? Intensely, of course. of course. Okay, and do you feel it in but, your vagina as well, or is it an anal orgasm? It's an anal orgasm, yes, absolutely. It's really intense. 
Wow. Really? Now it, well, it makes me want to give anal sex another try. <laughs> what are the techniques you use? You use all sorts of techniques. Well, I'm really more into uh, right now for their video presentations. I really would like them to see the transformation into more um, uh, going the sex dreaming way, which is really locking off their uh, uh, both of you the uh, the life passage and uh, keeping that for your life partners and being creative in all other ways, really creative, so that you can maintain your um, luminosity as a perfect you perfect said that more advanced luminous. more advanced practitioners um you said that they can actually have more than one life partner correct where they no, share we didn't the say that. no that no. confuses okay. the children that confuses everybody the life partner is strictly for a one-on-one -on -one commitment one-on-one -on -one commitment it's very peaceful. It's very beautiful. It's just like come home. And you don't have to compete with anybody. You don't have mm -hmm. to be stressed. You come home. Mm. Mila, what do you think of all this? I feel like I've kind of been practicing this myself. I just didn't have like the words and like more details behind it. So I definitely like want to learn more about it. I'm really excited to read the book and get into it more so this is really cool and i'm excited to like start making our content this way i'm really yeah. happy that you are on board with practicing sex dreaming with me yeah uh, i just asked mila to be my girlfriend the other day and she told me <laughs> so remember you want to make a completely Your dark sex room dreaming partner. sex dreaming yeah. partner yeah. Like you dreaming can have partner. many you can have many sex dreaming partners as many as people are courageous and are able to be trustworthy, committed. These are concepts that we have to bring back, otherwise our civilization is over with, over. Absolutely, I feel that. And have <laughs> lasting power, it's called lasting power. The ability to last together through challenges is lasting power. We don't have that anymore. We are completely disconnected. I want to also thank um, Anthony, who passed away after he did the book, because it's a great, and it's the only thing that he left behind when he died. And um, without him, the book wouldn't even be here, so. Yeah, wow. Thank well, thank you for sharing this beautiful way with us, guys and i'm excited we have more ways i wanted to tell everybody one other thing we have more ways we have a a new way for raising uh your children called the voice of seeing by ayakel kitsukwal here we would like at some point to do a podcast about that absolutely um, yes we will get you guys on raising, the and we will talk about raising your children with the ability to keep their their way of seeing energy as it flows rather than confining them to um, the adult only looking at objects for survival. We're, we're kind of working at the foundation of shamanism, which is passing on the knowledge as a sorceress to your son. And there hasn't been any discussion in any books or anywhere on that parenting technique. That's and, a really important you know, thing. I've been yeah, wondering how yeah. do I talk to my son? about the way you that use I creativity. Live. You let him lead. The, the voice of seeing is all about letting them at those times which are appropriate lead and guide you into their worlds. And there's all sorts of not doing techniques like with my daughter, one day we'll follow just colors in the, in the uh, landscape. We'll start with red, a red flower. And then she goes, Dad, there's a, a red uh, bird over there. Right, let's go. That takes us to the next location. Then it changes to blue. Ah, the blue sky. How can we get to the blue sky? Then we start. So using simple techniques for children, using their perception. My daughter is now, I'm a father. I have no idea. <laughs> but I am a grandfather now. <laughs> 
I have a grandfather in the house. So you remember little Luke? You met little Luke? Yes. He yes. Has a, yeah, he has a daughter, Ren, now. Oh, yeah. okay. He does. Yeah, they're um, all in their 30s. They're all in their 30s now. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I do remember, I send them a card always. I look at my tab. Okay, that's their birthday. So I'm a very good father. But um, they are now reading The okay. Voice of Seeing and realizing that I had a map to help them become aware adults, which they all are now. And all along, I didn't mention that I was a sorcerer ever. I became their best friend in this magical world. And now they're reading about the things that they maybe weren't aware of as little kids, but now, they, now they're seeing all the whole map. Wow. That's so cool. Well, I'm really excited to do a podcast about that as well. We can set that up sometime next week, actually, if you guys have time. Great. We can have, we can With have my daughter. With the coronavirus going on, I feel like everybody has time to sit around and learn and do cool, creative things. Any so, thing you yeah. yeah. Anything I wanna, else, guys? Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you, you want to do this podcast in parts because it's very long. I mean, I don't know. It's just suggestion Is she gonna yeah well we're actually we're gonna post the whole thing but we're also gonna take some clips and excerpt yeah. and nice. Uh, nice. make some like small pieces that Very can nice. be so and okay, like we can even... yeah yeah so yeah. Just my, 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 my brother and my boyfriend they are making us a song for the introduction to our podcast. We want a sexual beat. Uh, we want something that will make people have sex dreaming, okay? We want, have, we want sexy music. Sexy music, please. It okay? is. That they purposely are making it sexy and trippy. There you, now that's a sex that. dreaming technique. <laughs> there you go. All right, there you go. Found it out. <laughs> All right, Marla. Thank you. Cool. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Later, guys. Okay. Bye. That was great. Bye. Bye. Bye.